If you would like to join the meal train, please get with us on Facebook or contact Sean Embry. Um, there will be Breaking Bonds Kids tonight, and uh, I'm going to open this up with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this night, Lord. We thank you for this gathering and this opportunity just to lift your name up, Lord, the name above all names, Lord. We ask that you just let your Holy Spirit fill this room tonight, and may we leave different than we came, Lord. We just thank you for all the many blessings that you give us and the blessings that are yet to come. We just want to give you all the praise and all the glory tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. There's no 
God is in this story So in the storm you're walking through Feels like it's too much And you wonder if he even cares at all Just hold on tight to what you know He promised for Jesus. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, you're stuck with me tonight, gals. Glad you could be here. And uh, hey, I, um, you still, you're still having those uh, tickets for your, okay, I gave, I gave some money to uh, Julie, so she's supposed to give it to you, but she's not here tonight. Okay. <laughs> It, well, it won't make any difference if my, if I uh, uh, win that trip or not. I mean, it would be nice, but I mean, <clears throat> listen, uh, we're glad you're here. If you're guests for the first time, we're really glad you're here uh, to be a part of this experience. This is uh, one of those nights where uh, we we are hitting in the midst of football season, and that's why uh, Ryan and Julie uh, played his playing his first football game at Frederick Town. And uh, it's important for them to be there to watch him do that. And so uh, he asked me uh, the other day, well, a couple of weeks ago, said, can you do this? And I said, well, well, can you get somebody else? And he said, no, I need you to do it. And so today he saw me and he said, you know your own. And I said, oh, I thought that was next week. And he kind of had this, all of a sudden, this panic look. And I said, well, if I can't do it, KC will do it. And so, <laughs> so. And I said, you know, we'll get out quick if he's doing it, because he's a man of many, many words in certain ways, okay? But it's good, good that you're here, and uh, we're going to do something a little different. Uh, we, have, we have embraced many times the witness from you who have been involved with the recovery program, your residents, and we've appreciated so much uh, the clarity, the sincerity, and just the the witness that you you've all shared, men and women, in your programs. Uh, but you know, there's something else that's happening in this group. It's not just so much about you, as it's also about those of us who have walked the journey of faith for a long time, and have been renewed, and have also been challenged 
by our walk of faith because of you, uh, because of your or your willingness, your courage, your conviction to, to be to be recovered and, and to be whole and solid and to be in, the, in God's care and ministry. So we're going to take uh, tonight an opportunity for, uh, at, at random, I didn't, I'm not going to call names. I think I'd get in trouble doing that. But uh, we've, we've asked some people, and there may be some uh, uh, members of our church that would like to just share their personal commitment. And and I'll 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 just start by saying, you know, I was in ministry, active ministry for 44 years. Uh, I have been on this staff for almost uh, 12 years. Uh, I'm I'm in my last quarter of my life, and I've seen a lot of things. But I've watched in the midst of ministry over those period of times many things come and go, and I have watched also the church being challenged and. But never had I in my 44 years ever imagined that the church would step out, a church would step out and invite a ministry into the circle of faith with, with a challenge to, to be open, receptive, uh, to be forgiving, uh, to be respectful, and to be loving uh, as, I, as this program has. And it's just, it's, it's a great thing. And, and all over the state, there are other churches that hear about what is happening here. And, and we had, a, had, a, uh, had a, a great district superintendent who saw this and had this great conviction. As a matter of fact, he's here tonight. And we had a pastor who, who was willing to say, hey, I, I take, I'll take a leadership in that and let's do that. And here we are. Oh, what is it, about three and a half years, I think. So. We're going to take a few minutes, and then I'm going to close us out with uh, a little devotion, and then we're going to have a song, and, and then you all tomorrow, guys, tell, tell Ryan that he probably won't need him anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so who would like to be first to come up and share a little bit about how this ministry has changed your life or what, and tell who you are, and, and uh, maybe anything you'd like to. Okay, Tina. All right. I think this is on. All right. Hi, everybody. Those of y'all that know me know I don't talk in front of anybody. <laughs> so it has to be pretty important for me to be up here. Um, there's a few things I'd like to say, but when Pastor Charles last week said, are you going to be ready to talk next week? You don't know. I don't know if the, those of you that know him, but he does this a lot. Are you going to sing tonight? Are you going to talk next week? Are you doing the sermon? So I did not know he was serious until tonight. <laughs> But here we are. Um, I want to talk about the three things that I have learned from Breaking Bonds. And I feel like us as a church as a whole have learned from Breaking Bonds. And the first one is, um, sorry, Cody, I'm going to look at you a lot. Um, the first one is that I feel like we learned how to not be stagnant as a church. We learned how to worship. We learned how to be open in our faith. We learned how to express it outwardly and not be shy in that how to show others that our faith is strong and not keep it all inside. As a church, as a whole, before Breaking Bonds, we were quiet. It wasn't that our faith wasn't there, and it wasn't that we didn't do things in the community, but we didn't express it openly. And I feel like that's really important. Um, the second thing I feel like we learned from Breaking Bonds is how to love on each other. Um, we, we all love each other. But once the guys were here and once we formed these bonds, when you love somebody, you tell them. You tell them when you see them when you get there. You tell them before you go home. You hug them. You, nobody ever wonders if everyone loves each other. Like, it's a thing. And that's beautiful. Like, that's not out there in the world enough. Like, I and Riley, we're, we're huggers. We're loving people. Like, we're outwardly... We express it, but that's not the norm in the regular world. But once you enter the world of recovery, it is all the time. And that's so beautiful. And I think if more people could see what we see every day, they would, they would know to tell their families every day that they love them. Because so many families don't get that. And the third thing, and I talked about this after our mission trip, like, 
The third thing that I feel like I learned from Breaking Bonds, but also the church as a whole is learning, is what the world would look like if, like it says in the Bible, if everyone looked out for the other person and not for themselves. If every single person was constantly focused on the other person, nobody would ever have a concern. Literally, you can't do something around here. All you have to do is pretend you're going to do it. And there's three people there helping you. And it doesn't matter if they know you or if you have a relationship with them. Like, they're there. And they want to help. And they want to do good. And the whole world would be a better place. I think I've said that in every point I've made. If everyone would act like that all the time. We wouldn't have to worry about what was going to happen or who was going to take from us because everybody's always giving. And I know it's probably not like that all the time with every person, but the part of it that we get is always like that, and it's so beautiful. And I'm going to miss you so much. But I love all of you guys, even the ones I don't know, and I'm so thankful to be a part of your lives. Okay. <clears throat> oh, and I'm Tina. Hey. All right. Good. All right. Who, who would like to be next? Kathy, you want to be next? I tell you what, Kathy, Kathy and Eric came to our church, and uh, they came in the door, and we saw them come in, and all of a sudden they became a part of the, of the fabric of this church and been very involved and been here. And anytime the doors are open or something, they're, they're involved. So, Kathy, let you share a few words. Go ahead. Well, I'm not used to talking in front of a bunch of people, but I just felt convicted to do it. Um, to tell you how much breaking bonds and this church means to me, I had to just tell you a little bit about my story. Um, I had a serious head injury when I was an 11 and a half, and um, amnesia, concussion, and when I came out of that, I was a totally different person. I had been a happy-go-lucky kid, not a care in the world, and now everything was just black and dark and heavy, and I just did not want to be alive, and I just kind of struggled through it, and then just before my 13th birthday, my parents refused me to go to a concert because it let out too late, so I snuck off and did it anyway. And I was kind of scared to go home, so I met this couple, and they said, oh, you could stay with us. But what they did is took me and gave me to a man. And from just before my 13th birthday till just after my 14th birthday, when I got away, um, I was beaten, starved, abused. And when I... I was so broken. I guess that's why I'm telling everyone that is because I understand brokenness. I understand wanting to do well, but having something so broken inside you, you just can't be that person, you know, and then keep failing because of all this turmoil inside and keep making bad choices. And anyway, I did from the time... I was about 12 till the time I was about 50, um, except when I was pregnant and nursing my sons. Um, I drank chronically, and that too destroys your character. It doesn't matter if it's drinks or drugs, but it starts just eating away at the fabric of your being, and you're no longer who you want to be. And um, I had a spiritual experience. I could not believe God could love me. Even though I kept trying to follow him, I could not connect with him. And one night I looked in the mirror and I just caught a reflection of my lit self. And I just went up to the mirror and I was like, you stupid old drunk. And all of a sudden I heard a voice and I saw a man standing behind me and he said, I love you just like you are. And from that day on, my life changed. I had an experience with Jesus, and I wanted to tell everybody, and I'm just full of joy and on fire for God, and I have been for 16 years of sobriety that he gave me. <clears throat> but like, 
I went to church, and there were nice people at the church I went to, but um, I just never could feel like I connected. And I said, well, it's because you're out of your community, because I went in Cape for like 15 years. So my son and I decided to come here to uh, New McKendry. We didn't know there was a breaking bonds. But when we came in here, I knew I was home, and I knew God had a purpose for me. Part of the purpose was for all the people that are broken and going through what I went through. You don't have to have the same experience, but the end results is the same. Brokenness, self-hatred, um, no hope. And here people were so loving and the men from Breaking Bonds, so on fire for Jesus. Even in a lot of the Christian churches, they're not a... Uh, they kind of look at you funny when you're all on fire for God. And I can't keep my mouth shut about him because I would, he gave me wholeness and satisfaction and contentment. And here I'm at home because you guys are going through all the same things and you're developing the same kind of relationships with God. And um, it's just a, a beautiful thing. And kind of what uh, Tina was talking about, I wasn't here before Breaking Bonds. We came a year after Breaking Bonds. But I really believe that it is the Breaking Bonds guys that have gave us a new meaning to love. You know, that it's just Jesus is pouring it into us to pour into them, and they're pouring it right back at us. And this is how the family of God's supposed to be. And I'm grateful to be here and grateful for everybody listen. Hey, great, Kathy. Good. Appreciate it. All right. Okay, Eric, you want to say something? Sure. <clears throat> this guy loves this church. He wears this cap all the time. I sold it to him at a bargain. <laughs> Hello, yeah, my name is Eric Swartzel. I've been a member of the church for almost two years. And before I got here, I had a lot going on in my life. And, you know, it's kind of easier to explain a little bit about where I was to show how much those guys have, you know, brought me to where I am. And, you know, I was, I've, you know, spent a lifetime of addiction, started when I was about 12 and, all the way into my 20s, and then, you know, I guess I got rescued in a way, you know, my mom came down and saved me from that and brought me out here to Missouri, and it was just, something was always missing, I was always, you know, had such a hard heart, and I hardened my heart to everyone, including my family, God, it's like, you know, I followed God, and I love God, and I know he's there, but I just never figured out how to have a relation with the, the relationship with him. And, you know, it's just years of that. I mean, I, I, I guess also, see, when I, was, when I went through you know, rehab, it was a non-Christian one, and they didn't teach things like these guys are taught. I was taught addiction is incurable, and you can only hope to treat it by, you know, going to meetings, talking to counselors, and, you know, that's, that's your best hope. And you just hope you don't use for the rest of your life. And as soon as you stop going to a meeting or talking to someone, you know, you're, you're an addict, always an addict type thing. And I learned from these guys right away that that is not how it has to be. I mean, they are just like on fire for God. And they're, you know, not one of them that, I mean, I can see they're not addicts. They're, I guess, they're recovered. You know, they're actually no longer addicts. And it's like, I'm like, these guys who have, you know, probably had a hard heart just like me, have went through a hard time, if not harder, are able to do that. I was like, well, maybe I can. And little by little, every time I came in here, and, you know, these guys just loved on me. And it was slowly but surely chipped away at that wall around my heart until I realized that, you know, it's okay to be me. And, you know, God worked on a lot of my self-esteem issues and the fact that I you know, I was never able to forgive myself. I don't mind, you know, I can forgive anyone else. You punch me in the face and I'm telling you're sorry, I'll, you know, be your friend tomorrow. But I just never thought I was worthy of forgiveness, even though, you know, Jesus said I was. But I just didn't think that was for me. But I just learned so, so much from being around these guys, so much about love, which, 
I didn't even know I was a thing. You know, I didn't know, you know, I was allowed to love. I didn't know I was allowed to be loved. And ever since I came here, I just, man, I, I remember like one of the first weeks I was um, at a Breaking Bronze service. Legend just came up to me, put his arm around me, and just started praying for me, showing me a love. And it's like, I didn't know what to do because I hadn't, you know, I was before I brung down the walls around my heart or God brung them down and. I was like, man, I didn't know what to do, so I'm just standing there, and, you know, slowly but surely, they just broke away at that, and now it's like, they're just, they're brothers, I mean, they are truly brothers, and I love them dearly. I know I don't know all of you as well as I should, but we're all here, we're all family, you know, it's like, kind of like, I remember something that a lot of kids would say when you're growing up, you know, if you have a friend or something, it's like, you know, blood is thicker than water, you know, it's, in other words, you know. Friends can never be as close as your family or whatever. And I was like, you know, maybe blood is thicker than water, but you know what? We share the blood of Jesus, so what's thicker than that? What's better than that? And it's just, I've actually, you know, God has filled me up with, it's like an overwhelming, never-ending joy. And it's like, I've always heard, you know, people say, oh, you know, you know, you get higher on Jesus than you can on any drug you ever did. And I, I just thought that was something people said to get you to, you know, not want to do drugs anymore. And I never understood that, you know, till, I don't know, about four months ago or so. God just, you know, he broke all my chains, lifted all my weights, and gave me the ability to love and be loved. And it's just, it just amazing. I don't, I don't know how to explain it other than it's just overwhelming, never-ending joy. It's like, I feel like, I, I'm, you know, higher with that than any high I've ever felt before. And there's no side effects or there's no coming down. There's no tweaking in the middle of the morning. There's no, you know, all that fun stuff. It's just, it's like, it's almost, it's almost uh, weird for me because my, you know, my whole life I've spent hardening my heart and being depressed and, you know, bipolar and you know, all that kind of fun stuff and just being plain miserable. And I never, um... You know, I never thought I deserved any better, and I thought that was just the way it was. And, you know, I, I mean, I love, be, you know, in a sense that, like, you know, my mom, I didn't, you know, she's my mom, so I have to love her type thing. You know, I never really, you know, I had so much walls around my heart that I couldn't even, you know, express love to my own mom anymore. And, you know, I kind of turned away from, you know, God, even though I was following God, you know, I just went, went in a bad place. And then, you know, again, I met all these guys. And you ladies, too. It's just amazing to see you guys get up here and give your testimonies. It's just as, you know, I mean, I'm not a, a girl, so I don't care to, you know, relate to all that part, you know, girl stuff. But I can absolutely relate to, the, you know, to the brokenness and the drugs and all that. And just hearing you guys' testimonies and the strengths of everyone it just fills me up with so much love. And I didn't even know I was, you know, like I said, I did not know I was allowed to love or be loved. And. Now that I know breaking bonds and I know these men and seeing them graduating and seeing them talking about each other and loving each other, it's like, you know what, I can, you know, be broken and fixed and love again. So, and I love you guys all so very much. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. All right. Now, is there anyone else who would like to say something from the church? All right, okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. So, Tina, I know what you mean when Charles asks you to do something. There's just no getting out of it. Um, he delegates a lot to me every day. <laughs> but to be exact, it's three years and seven months that this program has been here. Started out with... Uh, Bruce Baxter came up with the idea, and they first thought about putting it down a Poplar Bluff, and, and uh, the powers that be at the time out of, out of Jonesboro decided that probably wasn't a good environment down there, so they looked at Jackson. Um, thank God they did. This has been the most amazing thing. You know, in my line of work, I'm, the, for you, I'm Brian, the lead pastor here. Um, in our line of work, you know, you get up here every Sunday, and you give a sermon, you talk about how we serve a God of of life and not death. We serve a God of not crucifixion, but resurrection. And we talk about all this stuff, which is right, theologically and otherwise is correct. 
but we never, it, it just remains theory a lot of times, you know, in these, in these nice churches that, that just do ministry and, and they're all good, but when you have the opportunity, like these ministries, to not just stand up here and talk about it, but because of you guys, your willingness to, to be open, your willingness to come here and get well, we actually have, get to participate in God, our God, who takes death and turns it into life. It's not just something we talk about. We get to see it. And not just see it, but we get to participate in it. So as we witness you guys and ladies going through this kind of resurrection process, which is what we see, um, also we find ourselves going through a resurrection process as well. And every once in a while during the... Uh, and it truly is a resurrection process because every once in a while during a graduation, they don't do it every time, but they'll have a before and after picture. I think, Richie, they had yours up there. It was the last one I remember seeing. Ooh. You're a lot cuter now than you used to be, I'll tell you that. But, but it truly is a resurrection because you come in looking like a zombie, but the person that's just a few weeks later and then just at seven months later, eight months later, there's color and there's joy, and it's exuding from the inside out. You can see it in your face. But we get to experience all that along with you guys. And it, another cool thing and, and is that when you graduate, you know, Boswell, he ain't going to let you out of here. I mean, he can leave anytime you want, I suppose, but he's not going to let you graduate unless you've got a plan. Anybody ever heard that? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you have. Um, and... So when you leave here, you come in with nothing but a history of bad decisions, but you leave here with a job and a future and a place to go and a life that you can now pursue. Most importantly, you leave here with a testimony, your own death-to-life testimony that you get to. And you've got a church family who's gotten to participate with you the whole way through it. And you don't know what that's done to us, to our walk to the life of this church, with you guys that are with us all the time, and you ladies that drive down up from where, where you come from to, to be with us. That means a lot to us. And what I'm finding is, is that ministries like this are starting to flourish. There's, there's more and more of them. Success begets success. God's made these successful, and now more will, will follow. And God knows we need it. Wouldn't it be awesome to someday for these ministries to be obsolete? Wouldn't that be awesome? No longer need a recovery ministry because nobody's getting in a mess. But until then, here we are. But we got guys that are getting ready to leave. We got two gentlemen, and I mean that term. There was a time when I wouldn't have, but now I mean it. <laughs> Kansas City and Thomas, they're, they're headed down to... Arkansas to be trained. I don't really understand what they're being trained on. Something about a CAD system that helps them build trusses, which is the roof, roofs, engineer roofs for big buildings. And that's an opportunity. Did you see yourself a year ago launching into a, not just a job, you guys are going to learn a profession. You're coming out of a recovery ministry and stepping into a profession. And that is amazing to think about. That is a God thing. That is a God thing. So we're going to miss you guys being here. My brother from almost Kansas City. <laughs> I don't know why they call you Kansas City. He's from St. Joe. That's not Kansas City. <laughs> KC's got a better ring than St. Joe. But, but uh, that's part of tonight, and I don't know if you had something in mind for saying goodbye, or we'll have a blessing for these two gentlemen at the, at the end of our, because you guys are headed out Friday? Saturday. All right. All right. A lot of pressure. Got a lot of guys wanting to follow in your footsteps. Do, do us right. All right. But this is an awesome ministry, and, and you've changed the life of this church just by being you and just by, by saying yes to God's call to come here and, and get better. And I love every one of you. Amen?
don't know if there is there anything else. Uh, I didn't point to anybody. Um, then I'm going to share a few thoughts with you, and uh, um, and I think those the thoughts that I want to share with you were. Uh, oh, okay, Kyle. Uh, my name's Kyle. Uh, I'm from Jackson. I'm a graduate. Um, and my whole life, I did things my way, when I wanted to do it, how I wanted to do it. And I feel like I knew that I needed God. I just, I didn't know how to get there. And so when somebody says something about breaking bonds, I knew I needed to go. I just didn't know how it looked. And so I, I took that same mentality with me there, and I went for everybody else. I went for my kids. I went for my parents. But over time, it changed, and I realized that I went there for me. I had to go there first for me because we can't help anybody else if we can't take care of ourselves. And God, through these ministries, has taught me that not only have I had people in my life that have loved me the, the whole time, and I was just pushing them away because of how I felt defeated and destructive, um, like a tornado just tearing through my path, but he's shown me how to receive that love and that we love because he first loved us. And so I just want to encourage anybody that's in the ministry or considering going to one that to go for you. And, um, and, and it's not about you after a time, it's about everybody else and you're paving a way for the guy behind you. And, uh, just, just, uh, let God work. And, um, he can move mountains, man. I, I, I feel more blessed today, and I feel more love than I've ever f felt in my life, but it's been there the whole time. He just, he taught me how to receive it, and I just felt like getting up here and saying that. <clears throat> well, I think we've, uh, <clears throat> we have found out by our sharing is this. God never gives up on anybody. God never gives up on anybody. You look at the book of Acts, the ninth chapter, and you see the first 19th verse. There's a guy named Saul who's going around just killing and, and, and trying to annihilate everyone who even wanted to be called a Christian in the early years. And, as, and then he was on his way to Damascus, on the road to Damascus, and there he was, all of a sudden, a light shined down upon him, and and blinded him, and, he, and, and this boy said, Saul, 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 why do you persecute me? Why? I need you. I need you on the other side. I need you doing good things, not bad things. And so, <clears throat> couldn't see for a few days, and Ananias then went to, to check on him, and his eyesight came back. He changed. And what happened, though, more than anything else, is a lot of people, they knew him, and he had to first work very hard to gain the trust of people to see that he had changed. But the point was that God never gives up on anybody. Great story a pastor, a colleague of mine, shared with me one time about a little eight-year-old boy he had a very rare disease. He had a critical condition, and the doctors and, and the medical staff had worked and worked for months. And finally, finally they, they uh, put him in a, uh, a care facility, and uh, uh, he was just there, and, and, and no one, he didn't respond to anyone. And then one day, they sent a teacher. They sent a, uh, a homebound teacher to go and talk to this little guy to kind of get some response out of him. And so uh, <clears throat> she, uh, she said, okay, we're going to talk about nouns and adverbs. And it wasn't much of a response. But said, we're going to talk about that for about 45 minutes. She came back the next day, and the next day, and the next day. And all of a sudden, the medical staff there uh, started noticing the little boy was responding a little bit. He seemed to be a little more active. He seemed to be a little more receptive of what was going on. And so one of the nurses there said, what are you doing? What are you doing to him? She said, 
nothing unusual. We're just talking about nouns and adverbs. And somebody said, well, something's going on. She said, well, you'll have to ask him. I, I, I'm just doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And, and the little guy, he said, uh, the nurse said, I, I'm amazed. What, what's going on? How come you're changed? The little boy said, well, I figured they wouldn't send somebody to work with me on verbs and adverbs if I was going to die. He received hope. He had received an invitation to, to recognize the fact that he, he was going to live. He was going to be different. God doesn't give up on anybody. I like, the, uh, I like when we read in the scriptures about uh, we read in the scriptures about John, the most beloved disciple. And uh, sometimes when I think about that, uh, I think about a friend who, who was always sending, uh, always sending cards and thoughts with the little, little uh, cliches and, and little quotes. And so he sent to his pastor friend, he sent him a card, says, uh, and on the card it says, I am the one Jesus loves. And so I said, I'm the one that Jesus loves. And he thought he was kind of cynical, and he thought he's always getting on the edge of certain things. And he said, he said to him, he said, you know what? Uh, at seminary, I remember that it was refer Jesus referred to John as his closest friend on earth. But if John were asked, what is your primary identity in life? He probably wouldn't reply, I'm a disciple. I'm an apostle. I'm an evangelist. I'm an author of one of the four gospels. But rather, John would probably say, I am the one Jesus loves. And you know what? Everyone in this room has the right to say, what? I am the one that Jesus loves. Say it again. I am the one that Jesus loves. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. You are the one that Jesus loves. Uh, the the uh, band can work its way up here. And let us. We're going to open up the the altar here, and then uh, uh, we're going to sing a song. And then before we leave, we're going to have Casey and, and Thomas to come up again. I know a few weeks ago, uh, I know uh, Ryan wanted to do before because they weren't going to be here. Wanted to do it last week, but we're going to do it again. Okay, we're going to send you guys out and. Uh, but uh, let, it, let us pray and know that the altar is open. Let you know you are the one that Jesus loves. Oh, God, we give you thanks for the time and sharing tonight. We thank you for the young people and for the band working to, to bring to us the gifts of joy and song and music. We thank you for the witnesses that have been shared. Bless these men and women on their journey, on their walk of life, to recovery, to wholeness, to a new day, to the resurrection, to the resurrected life, to find within themselves the confidence and the joy of knowing, I am the one that Jesus loves. In your name we pray. Amen.
quiet my feet rose to dance when death was arrested my life began for oh, your grace so free washing so Chains, I'm a prisoner no more. My shame was a ransom faithfully. He canceled my debt and he called me his friend. When death was arrested, my talented people, young and old, and we even have Breaking Bonds guys that are here and got Caleb back there playing, and every once in a while, so it just, uh, it's amazing, uh, and we're grateful for that. It's amazing to see how when one's gone, somebody else steps in, and, and Julie does a good job with that. Well, uh, you know, one of the, one of the things we find here too is that uh, 
when someone graduates and someone leaves or when someone missteps and takes a few steps back and so forth, our hearts are heavy and, uh, and our hearts reach out. Our heartstrings are pulled because we have learned in the dynamic of, of this walk and journey that we become brothers and sisters, truly. And we understand that in a different way than we had before, and we're grateful. So, uh, Casey and Thomas, if you guys will come up here, and Pastor Brian, to let you have the microphone, and we'll have, and, and uh, where did Thomas go? There you go. He get was hiding here. earlier. Do we, do we, uh, more yeah, on. let's get everybody up here. And you can reach out and touch the person in front of you if you can't touch, oh, and can be up here on the stage. And come on, ladies. All right. You want to turn the lights on just a little bit back there? We can kind of see where the steps. And I don't want anybody to fall up here. Just there. That's good. There you go. Okay. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for this ministry. We thank you for. We thank you that it's a challenge, and we thank you that it's difficult because it reminds us of how much, of how much we need to rely on you. So, Lord, just uh, you always give us the next right step to take. Tonight, Lord, we, um, we leave into your capable hands. We leave into your care two of our brothers, Thomas and, and Cody. And, Lord, we send them with your blessing to Arkansas, to Fayetteville, to be trained. And, and as they begin this new chapter in their lives, we ask that you protect them, wrap them in that blanket of grace, and remind them that they've got brothers and sisters we got a church family back here who loves them and is here for them. Lord, we send them to Arkansas to, to learn a new trade, but more importantly, we send them to, to learn a new opportunity for ministry, a new opportunity to bear witness to your light and your love. And Lord, they also go with the additional burden and responsibility of being the trailblazers for the rest of the men in this, in this ministry. So Lord, we, we know that you'll protect them. You'll give them the next right step to take as long as their eyes are just focused on you. So, Lord, we love them. We love you. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come back next week. Ryan and, and uh, Julia will be back, I think. Yeah. <laughs>